Please join in our responsive call to worship. It is taken from Psalm 104. O Lord, how wonderful are your works! In wisdom you have made all that is. The earth is full of your creatures. You created them when you sent forth your spirit, and with your spirit you renew all the world. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May God rejoice in all that God has made. Bless the Lord, all people. Praise the Lord. Please stand as we sing our opening hymn, Come, O Spirit, Dwell Among Us. If anyone sins, and each of us is anyone, we have someone who pleads on our behalf, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. Christ is the means by which our sins are forgiven. Because we are saved by grace through faith, let us faithfully come to God with our communal and then individual, bewildered by our continuing inability to make sense out of our lives. Our visions and dreams far outpace reality, and our expectations of ourselves are seldom realized. We do not do the good we intend, and the evil we thought we had left behind comes back to haunt us. In our relations with others, there seems to be no common language to unite us, and we resist including everyone in our concerns. Forgive our sluggish responses and our resistance to change. Purify and enliven us by your spirit at work within and among us.
Amen. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into the one body. Our baptism marks a new beginning, a new creation, and baptism is our appeal to God for a good conscience. So by the power of the Holy Spirit, know that you have been forgiven and be at peace. Please be seated. At this time, it is our privilege as a congregation to participate in the sacrament of baptism. As Charles and Sharon Hodges Hall present their infant daughter for the sacrament, and big sister is here as well, Mary Drew, and we're glad to have you with us, Mary Drew. The elder sponsor is Jeff Gray. We are thankful, too, that uh, Charles and Sharon uh, have their children in our Child Life Development Center. They join three other couples, members of the church, who have children in this new center, a wonderful uh, place uh, for children to know Jesus Christ and to send security and love uh, during the week. And so we are thankful for you all having your children. And we're thankful, too, to have members of the family here on this first two pews and have Bob back with us, a former member. Good to have you with us, Bob. Let us hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus, ensure of his presence with us. We baptize those whom he has called to be his own. In Jesus Christ, God has promised to forgive our sins and has joined us together in the family of faith, which is his church. God has delivered us from darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. In Jesus Christ, God has promised to be our father and to welcome us as brothers and sisters of Christ. Charles and Sharon know that the promises of God are for you and your children. By baptism, God puts his sign on you and them to show that all of you belong to him and gives you Holy Spirit as a guarantee that sharing Christ's reconciling work, you and your children will also share in this victory that dying with Christ is sin. You and they will be raised with him to new life. Charles and Sharon, in presenting Darcy for baptism, you announce your faith in Jesus Christ and show that you want her to study him, to know him, and to love him as a chosen disciple. Would you show your purpose by answering these questions? Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ. Do you trust in him? And do you intend for Darcy to be his disciple, to obey his word, and to show his love? Our Lord Jesus Christ ordered us to teach those who are baptized. Do you, the people of the church, promise to tell this new disciple Darcy Hines Hall, the good news of the gospel, to help her to know all that Christ commands and by your fellowship to strengthen her family ties with the household of God. The congregation will respond by saying, we do. We do. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your faithfulness, your son Jesus. As we baptize with water, baptize us with Holy Spirit. It may be your word, and what we do may be your work. O oh God, who called us from death to life, we give ourselves to you and with the church through all ages. We thank you for your saving love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hey there. Okay. Thank you. What is the full name of the child? Darcy Hines Hall. Okay. Ah, it's warm. Okay. Darcy Hines Hall, child of the covenant. I baptize you in the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and abide with you, both now and forevermore. Amen. We have witnessed the baptism of Darcy Hines, and we have welcomed her into the Church of Jesus Christ, the Holy Catholic Church, because the word Catholic means universal, and we become extensions of her family. We have members of the blood family here and on the stage, but all of us become aunts and uncles and cousins and nephews and grandparents. All of us as members of the body of Christ become channels of God's grace, whereby she may know and will know the love of Jesus Christ. She will know that love and that love will move her to claim Jesus Christ and make a profession of faith because of the gift of the Holy Spirit working through all of us to bring her to faith. And we're thankful. Well, Miss Darcy, let's see if you can travel. Okay. Whoops, get your hand. There you go. Mary Drew is going to walk. That's all right. We'll have a, this is a festive occasion on Pentecost. We'll have a parade, okay? All right. On the day of Pentecost, Peter preached and says, Repent and be baptized, for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off. And the word promise means covenant. The covenant is to us. And we baptize both adults and children, symbolizing that the gift of God's Spirit comes to us in our weakness. God takes the initiative to reach out to us. And when we baptize, we acknowledge that the gift of God's Spirit comes to us and claims us and moves us to faith. And so we're thankful this Sunday morning for all who are present, for Mary Drew, who sees her baby sister being baptized, and for the family and friends who are here, and for all of us who are here on this day of Pentecost to celebrate the gift of God's Spirit and the gift of God's Spirit through love, which will work in and through Miss Darcy as she knows of the love of Jesus and as she knows of her salvation in Jesus Christ, her Lord and Savior. She did well with the parade. And thank you, Mary Drew. You did a good job. Okay. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day when we read that 3,000 were baptized and began the process of becoming disciples, we're grateful you continue to bring us your chosen children for baptism. Be with uh, Darcy Hines Hall. Guide her as she grows in faith. And we pray for her parents, Charles and Sharon. May they continue to love with your love, teach with your truth, and to tell the story of Jesus to their children, Darcy and Mary Drew. And may we all continue to serve in the spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let us stand as we sing together a baptismal response. You need another child to learn your Good morning and wel welcome once again to worship. I'd like to extend a special welcome to those of you who are visiting with us. Ask that you take the visitor's card from the pew racks and pin the red ribbon on you so that we'll be sure to recognize you as a visitor and to greet you in a special way. If you're a visitor and you're interested in learning more about membership in this congregation, there will be an elder in the parlor following the service who can answer any questions that you might have about membership here. Also, we'd like to ask members and visitors alike to sign the Friendship Register, which is located on the center aisle of each pew. If you'll take that, fill it out, pass it down, and back up again, we'll have a record of your um, presence here with us today. Members and visitors alike are invited for a time of fellowship and coffee in the parlor following this service. This is a Stephen Ministry congregation, 
And we um, will have a Stephen Minister in the parlor following the service who will be able to answer any questions that you might have about this special ministry of our church. Um, Stephen Ministry is a lay-led ministry, one-on-one, -on -one, working with individuals just going through a difficult time in their lives. Perhaps you know of someone who could benefit from this ministry, or perhaps you would be interested in learning how you might serve and be a part of it. Once again, we do welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to this time of worship. Our hymn is number 320, The Lone Wild Bird. All who are able, please stand. Let us unite in our prayer for illumination. Almighty God, in you are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Open our eyes that we may see the wonders of your word. And give us grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading uh, comes from the book of Acts, second chapter, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, 
in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue now with our second lesson, reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 13. Hear now God's word to us. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discernment of spirits to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The title for this sermon, Ancient Ways, New Hope, was taken from a conference that I attended by that name several weeks ago. It was held in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I was excited about this conference on several different levels. The keynote speaker, Marjorie Thompson, is a well-known Presbyterian minister and author and workshop leader in the area of spirituality, and she was an attraction for sure. But probably the greatest draw for me was the opportunity to go to New Mexico, to visit a part of the Southwest that I had not seen, to spend some time immersed in the beauty of God's world there, and to experience the richness of its diverse culture. I was not disappointed on any of those accounts. I was eager and receptive open to see and hear, to be moved and inspired, 
as I buckled my seatbelt and made ready to land. The wind jarred me from my reading, jerking me to attention, bumping the plane to a safe landing. Clear blue skies, blinding sunlight, mountain-lined horizons, wind and dust, the color brown, brown earth, brown adobe buildings, brown skin. These were the images that greeted me. But as the week unfolded, I began to see the richness in that muted landscape, all the different hues and textures and designs. This closeness with nature in a place where earth and sky seem to meet and embrace reminded me of our dependence on nature and our calling to protect it for generations to come. I saw also the richness of the people, those of Native American, Spanish, and Mexican descent. Through worship and workshops, I would listen as Native people told their stories, old and new. We would share the unity of the spirit as we sang, prayed, and broke bread together. We would be inspired and challenged to pass that story on to others. On Pentecost Sunday, we remember our rich heritage as the people of God. We recall the first Pentecost in Jerusalem, where Jews gathered together to celebrate the Jewish festival of Pentecost, a feast of harvest and a celebration of the giving of the law to Moses at Mount Sinai. There would have been a great crowd gathered, Jews from many nations who spoke different languages, who looked and dressed differently, and yet who shared the unity of the faith. The disciples were there too, all together gathered in one place, waiting anxiously, seeking comfort and strength from one another, praying and remembering. It was 50 days since Easter and the resurrection of Jesus, 10 days since his ascension, and they waited for that promised spirit. Suddenly, there came from heaven a sound like the rush of a violent wind. Tongues of fire appeared among them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in other languages, much to the amazement of the crowd, gathering in the streets. How could it be? The disciples were Galileans, yet they each heard in their native language. What could it mean? They must be drunk, sneered some, filled with new wine. But Peter stands in the midst of the bewildered and frightened crowd and denies that charge. It is the fulfillment of prophecy the gift of the Spirit to all flesh. It is a sign of the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. It was that ancient promise fulfilled with new hope. At the dawn of creation, the Spirit hovered over the waters, stirring and creating, bringing life from formless void order from chaos, light from darkness. That same spirit spoke through the prophets of old, reminding the people of God's covenant with them, calling them to repentance and obedience, justice and mercy, and preparing them for the coming of a Messiah. God's plan for the salvation of humankind as seen in the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, is complete with the giving of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, the gift of Christ's continuing presence with us. The spirit of Pentecost moved among God's people, creating new life, giving birth to the church. It is the same creative force that moved across the face of the earth, creating our world and all the people that inhabit it. 
It moved over oceans and dry lands, mountains and plains, and it revealed itself to God's people in many ways. As I stood on the top of Sky Mountain Mesa in New Mexico, the site of the Acoma Pueblo, the largest continuously inhabited Pueblo, I felt the force of the wind and sand as it blew against ancient rocks that had survived the test of time. I listened as our guide told of her people, how ancient ways nearly forced into oblivion had survived, merged with Catholicism, and lived side by side today with new respect. I remembered the stories that I had heard in recent days of sisters in the faith, Presbyterian ministers who acknowledged their personal and family struggles to find identity as people of God. One woman's story touched me deeply. Her family had left the reservation and moved to the city to seek a better living and more opportunities for their children. They were Christians and they did not speak their native language or practice their ancient ways. Yet something drew her, even as a child, to that which was a part of the very fabric of her being. And she would seek open spaces, a field, or whatever she could find, and stand in silence to feel the wind blowing against her, renewing her, with the breath of life. It was years later, in a quest for understanding of her native culture, that she learned that her people, too, acknowledged the wind as the spirit, that what she was doing innately as a child was a part of her native culture and tradition. Now, as a mature adult, she has made peace with being Christian and Native American, seeing no conflict in the two, only sadness that a part of her own being was kept from her. As I made my way through the ancient streets of the Acoma village, the wind was a constant companion. At times, it was a gentle breeze and at other times a gust so strong that our guide was forced to stop and wait for the roar to subside. I stood in silence in the mission church, watching while artisans chipped through layers of paint to find hidden treasures. I lingered longest in the cemetery where layered graves trace the history of an ancient people. It is a history of bloodshed mingled with tears. I stood motionless as the guide pointed out the holes in the wall that surrounded the graveyard. They were for all the dispersed people driven from their homeland that their spirits might find their way home. I remembered a story that I had read to my children when they were young. It is from a Caldecott Award book, Arrow to the Sun. Many of you, I'm sure, have read it. It is a Pueblo Indian tale adapted by Gerald McDermott. It speaks to me now in a new way of a faith that we share in common and the spirit which nourishes us as one. I'd like to share that tale with you. Long ago, the Lord of the Sun sent the spark of life to earth. It traveled down the rays of the sun through the heavens and it came to the Pueblo. There it entered the house of a young maiden. In this way, the boy came into the world of men. He lived and grew and played in the Pueblo. But the other boys would not let him join their games. Where is your father, they asked. You have no father. They mocked him and chased him away. And the boy and his mother were sad. Mother, he said one day, I must look for my father. No matter where he is, I must find him. So the boy left home. He traveled through the world of men and came to Corn Planter. Can you lead me to my father, he asked. 
corn planter said nothing, but continued to tend his crops. The boy went to pot maker. Can you lead me to my father, asked the boy. Pot maker said nothing, but continued to make her clay pots. Then the boy went to arrow maker, who was a wise man. Can you lead me to my father? Aramaica did not answer, but because he was wise, he saw that the boy had come from the sun, so he created a special arrow. The boy became the arrow. Aramaker fitted the boy to his bow and drew it. The boy flew into the heavens. In this way, the boy traveled to the sun. When the boy saw the mighty Lord, he cried, Father, it is I, your son. Perhaps you are my son, the Lord replied. Perhaps you are not. You must prove yourself. You must pass through four chambers of ceremony. The kiva of lions, the kiva of serpents, the kiva of bees, and the kiva of lightning. The boy was not afraid. Father, he said, I will endure these trials. When the boy came at last from the kiva of lightning, he was transformed. He was filled with the power of the sun. The father and his son rejoiced. Now you must return to earth, my son, and bring my spirit to the world of men. Once again, the boy became the arrow. When the arrow reached the earth, the boy emerged and went to the Pueblo. The people celebrated his return in the dance of life. Certainly in this children's story, we hear echoes of another story, a story that transcends all stories and unites us as brothers and sisters in Christ. In an article entitled Spirit Wins Honoring the Creator, the author states, Native American spirituality is about honor, love, and respect. Not only do we love, honor, and respect our Creator and our Mother Earth, but also every living thing. It is about being in touch with ourselves and everyone around us. It is about knowing and understanding that we are part of everything, and everything is part of us. We are all one. At Pentecost, we celebrate the birth of the church through the gift of the Holy Spirit. That spirit ignited a flame which spread the message of Christianity across the world. It is a message for all people and all nations. We share a common yearning for God, a hungering for the spirit's presence which nurtures and refreshes which comforts and consoles, which prods and encourages. The spirit blows, and in its fluidity of movement, we too are lifted up like a bird in flight, able to soar into the clouds. Let us give thanks for God's spirit, which makes us one as I read the native prayer to the four directions. Great spirit of light, come to me out of the east with the power of the rising sun. Let there be light in my words. Let there be light on my path that I may walk. Let me remember always that you give the gift of a new day. And never let me be burdened with sorrow by not starting over again. Great spirit of love, Come to me with the power of the north. Make me courageous when the cold wind falls upon me. Give me strength and endurance for everything that is harsh, everything that hurts, everything that makes me squint. Let me move through life ready to take what comes from the north. Great life-giving spirit, I face the west the direction of sundown. Let me remember every day that the moment will come when my sun will go down. Never let me forget that I must fade into you. Give me a beautiful color. 
Give me a great sky for setting so that when it is my time to meet you, I can come in glory. Great spirit of creation, send me the warm and soothing winds from the south. Comfort me and caress me when I am tired and cold. Unfold me like the gentle breezes that unfolds the leaves on the trees. As you give to all the earth your warm, moving wind, give to me so that I may grow close to you in warmth. Amen. On this Pentecost Sunday, let us respond to the proclamation of the gospel as we stand together and say together our affirmation of faith, which is a brief statement of faith, part of one of the documents in our book of confessions, the section dealing with the Holy Spirit. Let us say together what we believe. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the Church. The same Spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles rules our faith and life in Christ through Scripture, engages us through the word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and calls women and men to all ministries of the Church. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in Church and culture, to hear the voices of people long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, Empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily task and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth praying, Come, Lord Jesus. Please be seated. Let us bring to God our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Let us pray. God, our Creator, earth has many languages, but your gospel of salvation in Jesus Christ proclaims your love to all nations in one heavenly tongue. Make us messages of the good news that through the power of your Spirit all the world may unite in one song of praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and through us in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Hear now our prayers of intercession and supplication on behalf of others. O oh God, as we read the newspapers and look at television, we're reminded in very graphic ways that we live in a fragmented world where there is strife among nations, strife among ethnic groups, strife among people of different religious faiths. May the Church of Jesus Christ be one in its witness to the world as an example of the unity you desire for all your children and as you desire for all Christians under your Lordship who proclaim the good news of the gospel to all. Set aflame the whole Church with the fire of your Spirit. Unite us to stand in this world as a sign of your saving love whether we be Presbyterian or Baptist or Lutheran or Roman Catholic or Orthodox or Pentecostal or Anglican or whatever denomination. Gracious God, give the wind of your spirit as wisdom and compassion to the leaders of this country. Be with the President of the United States, those in Congress, 
those in the judiciary at all levels, and with all administrative and legislative areas of state and local governments. May your spirit of cooperation, fairness, and justice working through these individuals be examples shown by our leaders, which encourages us as citizens to work on behalf of the common good so that all of your children might sense the transforming power of your spirit on their behalf. Gracious God, we ask your blessing on this community of faith we know as First Presbyterian as we minister on the power of your spirit from the heart of Raleigh throughout the ends of the earth. Give us the spirit of openness so that those who come may not feel like they're strangers, but friends that here all may sense the warmth of your presence as we worship you and are led by your spirit with eyes open, hearts sensitive, and minds alert to share together our commitment of discipleship in the world. Gracious God, use our God-given resources of time, energy, and talents that the body of Christ and in society may show to all that you, of the Lord of life, the creator and redeemer, and that all may be done to your glory. O divine physician, through your spirit, you supply every need, and so we ask that you would heal the sick, be with those discharged from hospital who are receiving therapy, comfort the distressed, befriend the friendless, help the helpless, and be with those who have lost loved ones or friends. And may the strength of your rod and staff as a good shepherd provide spiritual courage to all. For we make these prayers in the name of our Lord and Savior, who has taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We continue to respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ as we present ourselves this day for ministry through our tithes and offerings. Let us now present to God our gifts, our offerings this Lord's day.
Gracious God, may the power of your Holy Spirit transform these gifts, that they may become instruments of the good news of the gospel, giving hope and love and forgiveness, proclaiming the gospel of salvation. We make these, this prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we sing our last hymn, we, we thank our guest organist this Sunday morning, and we're thankful that she is here, Mrs. Lorraine Magnuson, and we look forward to her being with us.